Hello guys and gals of the internet, this is Simon Chaos of YouTube and it is a 7 Chaos Previews for the first time in a while in consecutive weeks. Uh, last week of course we had Evolve and I um, can't remember what the other one was but never mind, uh, and the Nintendo 3DS. This week we have, I think one game is definitely coming out, one game that I think is coming out and hopefully I'll be able to get it, and an Amiibo I'm picking up. <laughs> um, <clears throat> And I'll explain all about that right now. I'll try to keep this brief because I noticed that in the last two or three Seven Kills previews since I started, I uh, restarted doing them this year, they've been freaking like half hour marathons because I've been kind of explaining what I'm doing around it. But seeing as that's all out kind of out in the open and people kind of know what to expect, I will go a little bit into what's coming up over the next couple of days, but I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Alright, so the first game I think we should talk about is probably the most anticipated game so far this year. And it's the Order 8086, the PlayStation 4 exclusive. Now, I love PlayStation exclusives. I think console exclusives, for the most part, I have loved on this next generation of consoles. Um, I think last year, I think PlayStation, uh, last year, last gen was the PlayStation 3. I think they had the best, um, the best uh, console exclusives, you know, with the Uncharted trilogy. Uh, you know, even PlayStation All-Stars. Beyond Two Souls, Heavy Rain, you know, the PlayStation 3 had everything, God of War even, uh, you could say as well. The console exclusives on the PlayStation 3 were miles better than the console exclusives on the Xbox One, uh, the Xbox 360, sorry. Not to, excuse me, not to say that the Xbox 360 did not have some great exclusive games, you know, like the Gears of War trilogy, I love that trilogy, and Halo 3, and Halo 4, and so on, but I think... PlayStation had the, the PlayStation 3 had the best and the more exclusive games, and I think that's why the PlayStation 3, in my opinion, had the better exclusive games. It's very tight this year uh, for this gen, I've noticed. But that's really because that we've had a lot of remakes. You know, we've not had really a lot of console exclusives. Um, for the Xbox One, we've had Dead Rising 3. Uh, which is a pretty good game. Um, I suppose we could call Titanfall an exclusive in a sense. Um, it's a Microsoft exclusive, so yes, I guess we could say Titanfall in a in a way is an Xbox One exclusive, is a Microsoft exclusive, but it's the same thing. Um, what else is there? I think Plants vs Zombies that was a good one for the for the Microsoft side of things. Again, it's uh, not an Xbox One exclusive, it's a Microsoft exclusive, but it's the same thing. Killer Instinct was definitely an Xbox exclusive, and I'm still playing the living heck out of that game. I love that game, and I love kind of the idea that they've got releasing the characters gradually. Like I said, I think it keeps the game fresh. So I think I like that, what's going on there with uh, Killer Instinct. I'm still playing the hell out of that game. For the PlayStation 4, I don't think we've had any real good exclusive games, to be honest with you, yet. Um... We've had Drive Club, but that was a that was a kind of clusterfuck when that game was coming out. It was it was coming out, and then it was delayed, and then it was delayed indefinitely, and then the game came out, and the PlayStation Plus version didn't, and then there was always controversy about we got screwed and things like that. It's ridiculous, but um, yeah, I don't think Sony has had a real killer exclusive yet. Um, maybe Infamous, actually. Maybe I would say Infamous was probably the only one that people were really looking forward to. Uh, since the PlayStation 4 came out. Q February 20th, 2015. My birthday, incidentally. It's birthday week. Yay. Uh, 26, and I'm definitely feeling it right now. Um, <clears throat> Q, yeah, so Q that day when the Order 8086 comes out. Now, we, we all know that the game looks completely freaking gorgeous. We all know that it looks absolutely stunning in gameplay and in cutscene, especially the cutscenes. The cutscenes kind of remind me of the Halo Master Chief Collection and the uh, cutscenes in Halo 2. They're pretty much like that, you know, stunning like that. Um, but of course, a few kind of, not I guess gaming media, you could say, uh, Eurogamer in particular, uh, did actually play, uh, not really an advanced copy of the game, but more of like an advanced demo, you know, they got to play maybe a 15 minute snippet uh, earlier this year. And the kind of agreement was that the game had a tremendous amount of bugs, uh, the cover system was kind of wonky, uh, and all this sort of stuff. And I'm sitting here thinking, 
Dude, you're playing an advanced copy of the game. You're playing an advanced demo. You're not playing the full version. You're not playing the demo that's coming out. You're playing the game like a couple of maybe a month before it's coming out. Of course there's going to be game bugs in it. But that's the whole point. Um, that's the whole point. If you can say that there are bugs in your game, uh, the people that made it, and I cannot remember the developer's name for the hell of me, actually, I'm going to have to find that out, um, you know, they'll fix it. Um, so, you know, it's it's not all bad. Let's, let's, let's wait for walkthroughs. That, like, my my advice is simple. Let's wait for the full retail version. Let's wait and see some walkthroughs, not advanced walkthroughs, like these guys that play the game a week ahead of time. I do not watch those. I do not support that whatsoever. You know, because it's like the the guys get the game a week ahead of time, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna break street date. I'm gonna play it on the day it comes out. That's what I would suggest. Watch it from the day it comes out. Watch people that do that, and then we'll judge for ourselves on that alone. Let's not judge it on what anything Eurogamer or anybody else is saying because we all know they're playing an early an early build or an alpha or whatever. Um, you know, so we can't really we can't really judge on what they say because that might not reflect the full quality of the game. They even say it in demos these days, they say, Oh this this will not reflect the full quality of the retail release. So I think we should probably just wait for that. We all know the game is going to look gorgeous, but it's the gameplay and the story and the, and the sort of stuff in the game that make the game and not the actual kind of graphics. I've said it a lot um, and I still stand by that today. So we're going to have to wait and see um, how, what kind of gameplay is in the order 86. It looks great. It's cover based. It kind of reminds me of Gears of War. Um, and I loved Gears of War the trilogy. So if it's anything like as epic as Gears of War trilogy was, then it's going to be great in my opinion. But Let's not judge the game on its graphics. I know there was a prime example. Beyond Two Souls came out. Everyone was in contested agreement. The game looked amazing, and the cutscenes looked amazing, and the motion capture looked great. But the gameplay was really simplistic, and the story was, eh, you know. And I, I, I personally, I loved Beyond Two Souls, but there was this contested agreement that yes, the game looks great, but the gameplay is too simplistic, and the story is kind of all over the place. And I agree on the story, it was kind of a lovely place, but it all kind of made sense to me in the end. I personally, beyond, beyond Two Souls, but it's, I'm, I'm throwing it out as an example of, yes, your game looks great, but if your game playing your story and all this doesn't add up, you're going to end up kind of flat, no matter how get, uh, good the game, the game looks. Because graphics don't make a game, that's basically what I'm saying. So, we're going to have to wait. It does look so good to me. Uh, the graphics are obviously amazing. Um, and I think the Order 86 is going to be... What Uncharted was for PlayStation 3, Uncharted 1 Drake's Fortune. Uncharted 1 Drake's Fortune pretty much showed off the full graphical capabilities of PlayStation 3. I think we're going to get that with the PlayStation 4 and or the, the Order 8086. Um, I think that's going to be the first kind of real graphical power that we're going to see in the PlayStation 4. So I can't wait for it. I'm like mega excited. And if it, like I said, if it's anything like Gears of War, which it does look a lot like to be honest, if it is anything like Gears of War, it'd be great. As long as it's not Gears of War Judgment, I guess. <laughs> um, so, there's the Order 86, but like I said, wait till the game comes out, wait for... I was gonna say, I, I'm gonna say this. If you want a review, I would say, I would suggest watching game trailers, because they seem to be very unbiased in their reviews. I mean, I've only really disagreed probably about two of their reviews and one of those was obviously Murdered Top Suspect. They gave it like a 5.5. I think the game was much better than that. Um, but you know, I, I rarely disagree with game trailers on any review they put out. And I think the, the thing that really caught my eye was they weren't, they weren't kissing Call of Duty's ass. You know, when Call of Duty's Ghost came out, consensus agreement amongst the gamers that Call of Duty uh, Ghost was kind of meh, it was a mediocre release, it wasn't really a great uh, Call of Duty game in terms of multiplayer anyway. I, I personally loved the campaign, but multiplayer was kind of meh. Um, IGN obviously comes out when Call of Duty comes out, I think it gives it something between an 8.0 point, an and a 9.3. I'm like, what? Are you serious? You, what version of Call of Duty Ghost did IGN play? Because it must have been a kick-ass version compared to what the rest of us got. Like, what the hell? Game Trailers, on the other hand, actually gave the game a 7. So, 
I would I would believe game trailers over anything IGN says any day. I I, I guess you know because. IGN traditionally they seem to always think that they they hated Resident Evil 6 but they loved Call of Duty, you know. And I could I could go into a rant about that sort of stuff, you know, how blame Call of Duty for how Resident Evil 6 played or something like that. But that's not the purpose of the video, so I'm not going to do that. So I would say if you're going to wait for a review, probably wait for game shaders. There be there would be your best bet. They would give you an honest opinion and they would call it like it is. So. Game traders, yeah, I would watch out for their review if anybody is. And IGNs, well, we don't know. We don't know what they're going to give the game because we all know they're Call of Duty fanboys down there. So they're obviously going to give Call of Duty like a something between an 8 and a 9 half the time. Even if the game is kind of mediocre, as I just said, with Call of Duty Ghost, they gave you something between an 8.3 and a 9.3. And I'm like, no, that's not what gamers are thinking. What game did you play? You know what I mean? So yeah, um, I'm not hating on IGN by the way, that is actually cold hard facts, you actually go and look on YouTube and look at the reviews, it's actually the case, I'm not, I'm not bullshitting, that was actually the case with Ghost, I laughed, I was like, oh, well, like what, what, what version of the game did you play, what the hell, um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're just any kind of Call of Duty big, big fans or maybe even fanboys, you know, down there, so I'm just going to give the game a high score anyway, um, but I haven't really... I've been more focused on game trailers reviews rather than anybody else. When you see a review like Call of Duty Ghosts, given an eight, an eight or a nine point three, when other gamers are thinking probably it's maybe a bit a seven at best, you know. So it's it's kind of weird. That's 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 kind of what it brought me to game trailers because their opinion of Call of Duty Ghosts was unbiased and it was honest. Um, but like I said, they do have the couple where they kind of fall a bit, you know, with Murder Soul Suspect. I actually think that was a much better game than a five point five out of ten, but. There was a consensus agreement amongst the reviewers because, like, I, I don't know, all the reviews seemed to not like the game, but Lady Tomlow loved it, and so did I, and so did a couple of other gamers as well, you know? The game media cannot always be trusted, and uh, a lot of gamers do say that. Uh, so I would wait for game shows on their review before I, or watch a walkthrough for day of release or whatever to uh, get a clear opinion on the game, so. Alright, so I'll be definitely picking that up. Um, the same game that I think is coming out this week is uh, Dead or Alive 5, the final round. Basically, the definitive version of Dead or Alive 5 on the next generation of console. Sorry, just having some tea. Um, you might have to excuse my washing machine. I'm washing my shoes right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so. It's actually quite a surprising one because Dead or Alive is actually coming out for the Xbox One, which I had no idea that was even happening. I was like really confused. I was like, huh? There's always been a PlayStation exclusive. What on earth is it doing on the Xbox One? So I think it is Year of the Finding Games. You know, you've got Dead or Alive this week, supposedly, I think. Um, you have Mortal Kombat in April. Street Fighter V is going to come up for the PlayStation 4 and PC uh, sometime this year. Uh, Ultra Street Fighter 4 is actually going to be on the PlayStation 4 itself, so I'm actually buy that. Even though I've got the Xbox 360 version, see if I can compare the two, that'd be pretty cool. So still have the Xbox 360 version of the game, so it'd be kind of cool to do a comparison and uh, see which kind of version I like better. Um, so I might do that. I mean, that's actually something fun to do. Um, so yeah, Dead or Alive 5 is pretty much the definitive version of the game, with probably all the DLC unlocked, uh, some extra characters I think have been added. Um, you know, probably some extra modes, you know, that all, all the kind of definitive version of the game stuff, you know, all kind of remastered stuff, the DLC, extra characters, extra costumes, uh, extra elements, blah blah blah, you know, a basic remaster of the game and definitive version, you know, like what, what Sleeping Dogs did, basically, where you get all the DLC and all the extra characters and all that stuff. So that should be fun. I'm definitely going to go online with that. I'm probably definitely going to do it with the story mode. Because I did have Dead or Alive 5 on the Xbox 360 and didn't keep it for very long and I don't know why. Oh, actually I can't remember that. I do remember picking it up but not really how long I kept it. It must have been after I did the story mode or something and just found nothing in it again or whatever. But, yeah, I think that, I mean, that's going to be pretty cool. You know, Fighters are back with a vengeance this year. So Dead or Alive 5 kind of kicks off the, the fighting game like year. Excuse me, year if you like. Dead or Alive 5 is the first game in a plethora of fighting games coming out. And, um, third thing I'm picking up this week is my Sonic Amiibo. Yeah, 
<laughs> it's a Sonic Amiibo. I've been waiting for it for, forever. So, yeah, all my Amiibos are still in the boxes. I've not touched them. I'm just gonna sit them there, and they're gonna stay there. They're gonna stay in the boxes. They're awesome things. I didn't think I'd pick up any, but what the hell? Yolo, I guess. All right. So that is pretty much it in terms of what's coming out this week. Daryl Alive 5 is a maybe. I don't really know if that's confirmed or not coming out this week. I think it was February the 17th if it's confirmed. So I guess that's America. So I guess it's going to be on my birthday that the game comes out with the Order 86. So kind of two PS4 games, which is good because I haven't really bought many PS4 games since the console came out. <laughs> um, I've been more focused on the Xbox One to be honest. Um, although I did play Resident Evil 4 on the PlayStation 4, so that was cool. Alright, so what to expect in terms of footage? Well, tonight is actually going to be this. This is 7 Kills previews right now. Um, the game in FIFA 15, the FA Cup game against, in my, in my terms, Tottenham Hotspur, because Manchester United are playing Preston tonight in the FA Cup, and I have no hope for them whatsoever because Manchester United have been freaking horrible. Uh, this season, it's like Rooney's playing out of position and whatnot. It just doesn't make any sense. And against the small teams, United have pretty much struggled. I mean, we were eliminated by Milton Keynes Dons in the Capital One Cup. So yeah, hope's not very high against Preston tonight, but live in hope. Um, so yeah, that. Um, but I was actually facing Tottenham in uh, in the FA Cup game, and it was actually a shock, um, a shock elimination at the end of the match, which is actually going to surprise a lot of people. It did be. I was like. Oh my god, how did that work? <laughs> and we have another injury. So, yeah, I think in FIFA 15, they time was getting the same thing. We seem to get injuries like like there's no tomorrow. There seems to be like injuries all over the place. I mean, at one point, uh, I had about four injuries. I had myself, I think Rudy was injured, uh, Wilson was injured, and then Carrick got injured. And now another player's injured, along with Wilson and Carrick still recovering from theirs. So it's like, oh my god, so many injuries. It's insane. Um, and the final uh, thing that will go up after that is the three final videos of my um, Super Smash Brothers uh, various characters uh, set uh, that I did uh, a week or so ago. Uh, the last few videos will be, I can't remember who part 13 was. Part 14 was Kirby after picking random and part 15 was Sonic. So I can't remember what part 13 was. So I don't remember that. I might return to that at some point, because there's a lot of characters I didn't check out. And unfortunately, Rayman, I think, has been deconfirmed. I think, I think Rayman was kind of... It was kind of a leak that Rayman was coming out. Apparently not. Apparently that was fake. So, it was a very good fake, though. You know, everyone was kind of like, oh my god, it's so real. You know? And then it turns out to be like, no. Nope. And it's like, oh. Damn. <laughs> so, yeah, it's still only muted for DLC for Smash. I really do hope that there will be more characters because even though Smash's roster is so huge, it does have the potential to be bigger as we know with Mewtwo. So that's that. I think that is everything. So and then I don't know what I'm gonna do for uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday the Order 8086 will start because that's actually gonna be the playthrough I pair with the rest of Resident Evil Remastered basically. Um, because obviously I haven't finished that game yet. I've still got another kind of 48, uh, tw 48, uh, 28 parts to do. So what I'm probably going to do is upload the Re rest of Resident Evil just two videos a day up until Friday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will be all Resident Evil, and then the order will start on Friday, and then we'll pair that with the rest of the Resident Evil play uh, remaster playthrough. So that's what's going to be happening. So the two games that are going to be in the in the near future anyway are going to be the Order 86. And Resident Evil Remastered, unless I really struggle with the order and fail to complete it. <laughs> but I will, I will make a conscious effort to actually complete these games, or complete them before I upload them, but I don't want to fall too far behind. So maybe I should upload two, see how the, the game goes, and then kind of, if it doesn't really go well and I get completely stuck to the point where I can't do it, then it's only two videos and you're not missing much. You know, it's not like I'm uploading 20 and then the videos will be taken down because I'm stuck at the game. You know, that was the kind of the, uh, the case with Alien Isolation and The Evil Within. Alien Isolation was a great game, but I got stuck. And The Evil Within looked like a great game, but I didn't like the letterbox screen. So those playthroughs were sadly discontinued after about four videos of peace, I think. Uh, Alien Isolation was a shame because there was some really funny stuff in that game. And I'm kind of gutted that I didn't do that, actually. 
the only thing is, I don't have. If I had video editing software, I would have compiled all the funny moments of the Alien Isolation, uh, uh, the Alien Isolation playthrough up to the point where I stopped, uh, or had to stop, and then would have compiled it into one video and actually showed off like a highlights montage. That would have been actually freaking awesome. I would have actually loved to do that, but unfortunately, I didn't have any software, so. Unfortunately, that was the breaks. Alright, I'm done for this video. I'm going to keep it as short as possible. What did this go for? 20 minutes. Fuck, it's still going for 20 fucking minutes. <sighs> I hate that. Anyway, that's it. I'm out of here because I'm just going to waffle on and it's going to go for an extra 10 minutes and I'm going to... Oh, fuck it. Alright, guys, I'm out of here. Spend the order 86 on Friday. I hope this is down live as well if it comes out. That is it for the Simon Kills previews of this week. Sorry to them for another 20 minutes. What can you do, I guess? Alright guys, I'm Sonic Yelson, I'm signing off. Peace.